So it's a privilege to be able to work with with Marvin. Uh, he he's quite a guy. Known him quite a while. He's been mayor now for five years. He's just started his second term of three years. Uh, and right at the beginning of that process of becoming mayor, he he really much opened the door for the church to connect. There's a good was well, there was already a good degree of unity across the, the the church community in the city, but the opportunity that Marvin gave his his offer and ask, you know, if the church. Uh, is able to offer support to the city, then then go and knock on his door uh, and ask for, for what you need from the council and other partners to be able to deliver. And we did that. We listened to Marvin. We, we went along to understand what the issues were and made offers. Um, and um, uh, over the last five years, we've done that, obviously, with the pandemic, um, the, 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 the priorities changed to a degree. So at the beginning of the pandemic, we sat down with Marvin again, um, uh, virtually, of course, because of social distancing, uh, and we revisited what the priorities were. And over the last 18 months, we focused on a number of issues. Food insecurity is a common theme that most towns and cities have faced, and we've been able to, to build on the foundations that already been put in place uh, over the previous years uh, and really upscale significantly, bringing the whole city together with church at the core of it. You men he mentioned on, on the call earlier that the need for emergency foster carers. We had 70 foster carers who were um, over 65 and therefore had to self-isolate. Uh, and the church responded remarkably um, over a very short period of time to that call and contributed significantly, just blew the council away. They were absolutely extraordinarily amazed by the ability the church had to, to respond to that. Um, also around child welfare, mental health and well-being. Again, a common theme, Andy and, and Marvin mentioned that. Uh, and we put programmes in place to support vulnerable children. Um, um, where we partner with Transforming Lives for Good, similarly with uh, mental health and well-being and digital exclusion. Going forward, um, Roger, we've got uh, very much a plan that, that we're working with Marvin and others in the city to develop, um, continuing to su support those in crisis, but also ensuring that we're contributing to those bigger needs of, of housing and homelessness uh, and also um, work creation and employability. Uh, but also working around some of those personal uh, challenges of mental health and well-being uh, for children, for, for adolescents and for others. Um, and, um, uh, and those that are, um, uh, you know, uh, impoverished in terms of isolation. So, so big programs uh, in place, uh, but the opportunity to work uh, with Marvin uh, as a Christian mayor has, has been remarkable. Um, obviously, we have to deliver. Um, uh, church, um, I guess, over the past has perhaps been viewed a little bit as as well-meaning amateurs, but we've had to up our game. Uh, and um, I think as long as we're able to to deliver and deliver well and honour God in what we're doing. Uh, then I, I think that we have a real future contribution to make. And for us, just to finish, that I guess the overriding um, um, desire is, is to is to honour some of those key scriptures. One of them for Bristol has been Jeremiah twenty nine seven, uh, you know, where we're saying you know to seek the peace and prosperity of the city, uh, and we're really seeking to do that. And interestingly, that verse goes on to say, and, and, and as you see, as you seek, as the city prospers, so you too will prosper. There's a sense, I think, the future of the church and the city is at stake here. As we seek to bless the city, then the church itself will be blessed and will thrive, not to survive, but thrive. So I think this is a, a huge opportunity to church become to become relevant and connected again.